Uh, hi, how is everyone doing? So, um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, abstractions and building up a case study with ChessPy, an open source chess client. So, a bit about me um, I'm Abro Gupta. I am going to be a junior at Lindbrook High School when summer ends. It's uh, my Twitter and that's my GitHub. Um, so, I started programming like I'd say middle of seventh grade. Yeah, uh, I think so. So I started programming sometime like in the middle of seventh grade. I started with app development for iOS, and then I gradually moved on to Python, to a much cleaner language. Uh, so yeah. So this is the agenda for today. So um, I'm going to be talking about like the big questions in this talk, and then you know use chess and uh, so on, you can read that, uh, yeah. So the big questions. What is abstraction and why is it important? So uh, abstraction, as um, most of you probably know, is the concept of uh, taking, an I taking an idea and um, making it easy to refer to, giving a name of some sort, uh, um, and representing it in a way that's Repre representing it in a way that is simple, it gives you all the details you need and cuts out anything that's unimportant. And why is it important? Well, it's kind of what the whole paradigm of object-oriented programming is based on, abstraction. And without abstraction, like, basically none of modern programming would exist. Um, it, it's like the only way to take an idea or a situation and kind of trans put it into like a neat little box so that it's easy to use. So um, let's use chess to understand abstraction. So chess is um, a board game. And it's simple. It consists of a board with pieces. You know, there's two players. It's unambiguous. There's concrete game rules. So like, there's no weird, like, uh, all, all the rules are written down. They're explicit. They don't change. And it's well known, as you guys probably know what chess is. So why I chose chess? Well, I've always been interested in chess. So I used to play competitively. My rating was somewhere upwards of like 1,000 at one point. Uh, for reference, the Grandmaster's rating is uh, 2,500. And also programming is something you know I love to do and I do in my free time. So I decided, why not combine them? Do two things that I love at once. So, so the model for chess. So what, what I try, what this, what I'm doing is essentially um, creating a chess client, a simple, you know, a simple way to create a chess client. And um, first of all, before you can do anything, you have to figure out, you know, what is my model? What, what am I trying to do? Essentially. So if I want to create a chess client, well, I need a board, an abstraction of it, right? I need pieces. I need a way of verifying moves. And this is especially important so that people don't just go around like doing legal moves and um, then it will totally mess, mess it up. And obviously, we need a way of changing the board to implement those moves once they've been made. And then we need a way to detect you know, the game's end and who won. So this is the model I came up with. The model I came up with. As you can see, this game object is. Um, so this game object is basically what is encompassing most of it, and both players are interfacing with it. So this is um, especially important because I wanted to create the player, create the player external, so that way they could be, you know, they could be. They, they don't really have an effect on the game. That's all. I want to abstract the game and it's just one single idea that's clear to interact player to And inside it, well, you can see the board with pieces in the board. And then there's validator on it, which takes in a move that the player plays and makes sure it's legal and then changes the board. And then changes and the board in turn changes the arrangement of pieces on the board in order to reflect that change. In order to reflect that change. And after the game is done, after the game will output a game will output a result. And um so, I, I, so basically, I, my code, basically my code was kind of, um, this is the design I used, so the, design I the used. code I wrote, basically the code I wrote is basically reflected this design. Yeah, so, 
before movie or I want to be talking about it, I don't want to base class a bit. Like base class is that it's like a fundamental, fundamental like basically it's an abstraction. It's an abstraction. Uh, uh, and so an abstract base so class, class is base class that can never be instantiated. Never be instantiated. So it's either the base kind of frame frame or the frame 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 So um, so and just um, by I made an abstract base class called a piece. Base class called piece. And this abstract base class abstract essentially holds the foundation for what the foundation really is. Piece really is. So, so obviously all the pieces on board, all the pieces on board, the Roy and Ike Bishop, so on and so forth. So on, they all share a set of they all share a set of in this case a set of in this case a set of methods, and they have a lot of methods. They have a lot of methods. Writing all that code, writing all that code. Instead, we put it in the set piece, add it on the base piece, abstract base class. So it makes it much easier. It makes it much easier to find here and this Peter Pan here, Roy for nine or whatever it is for nine or whatever it is on that piece. And obviously we don't want to because we don't want to because we don't want to because because it's a piece, right? It's a piece. It's a type. Of the type of object, object, essentially, object essentially. on the board, on the board. Uh, so in this case, you can uh, see so in this case, initializing method, initializing method. So what that means is, so what that means is, it has to be implemented. It has to be implemented. Class that inherits it. Class that inherits it. Python will throw an error. Python will throw an error. And same with possible. And same with every single piece. Every single piece has a method called class. A method called in order for the rules. In order for the and the reason that and the reason that every single piece has a possible rule. The way. The validators work. The validators works. It looks at all the possible. Looks at all the possible and all the possible. The user enters the match. The user enters the match. The user enters the match. If it did, then it will then apply the move. If not, then it will. If not, then it will. It's not illegal. It's not illegal. And then there's like the equals. And then there's like the equals method. I have to write my own. I have to write my own custom personal equals method because equals method because when I'm testing for equality, I'm testing for equality. I want to be in the same. I want to be in the same. Instead, um, um, the reason I'm 
um, because uh, the reason that was painful is because um, if, we use a for loop, if we use a for loop to record all the moves that are on top of the rook, we're going to have to copy paste the code to record all the moves on the left of the rook, on the right of the rook, below the rook. And that would be painful because you're copying and pasting the code four times and uh, that's not good. So instead we use a lambda to essentially abstract the direction of the movement and write a function that only focuses on moving until there's an obstacle. So let me show you what I mean in the next slide. So if, as you can see, there's a function possible moves. It takes in direction, which is a lambda, a function, and um, the position, which is essentially the board, the position on the board. And what this does is it keeps adding like those little dots until well, either, as you can see in the while loop, until either it's not on the board, because if, you, if, the, if the, essentially the pointer is like, the thing that's recording the move is not on the board, we want to stop, because the, we can't move off the board. And um, if the square is not empty, so the is square empty is obviously a method written uh, that I wrote on the uh, position class. And so this while loop, makes, it keeps doing this until it's not on the board and the square is um, not empty. So what this is doing is it keeps appending the current move to this, uh, a current move to the list of possible moves, and then it keeps moving it a certain direction. So now this direction can be specified later using a lambda. So uh, instead of um, instead of a specific, say, shift up, as you can see in the bottom, like, so this, um, that way we can put in all the, di the directions as shift up, shift right, shift down, and shift left, and pass those in into the function. So that way, um, all of these, basically the same function is there to record all the moves on top of the rook, left, right, and below the rook. Um, so the shift up function is uh, a function of the, the type I made called location. And this is, this type is essentially an abstraction of a coordinate. Like, it's a coordinate on the board. That's what it is. So inside that class, I wrote a method called shift up, which shifts the, the coordinate up, because I didn't want to manually have to change the x or y coordinate. And I made one called shift down, shift left, shift right, as, and you know. So um, that way now, since I have those functions, I can pass them in as lambdas and keep applying shift up to, say, for example, shift up to the, um, the location, the, the current location of the rook. And those resulting locations that get returned, put them in a list called possible and return that, because those are all the possible locations that the rook can move to next. Um, and this is really powerful because they abstract me the direction, because as you can see, we can reuse this code later. So if you reuse it to record bishop and queen, so obviously, if you think about a bishop, it's basically a rook that moves diagonally. So instead of up, down, left, right, it moves up, right, up, left, down, right, and down, left. So instead of uh, repeating ourselves, why not um, use the, the method, the, the possible method, the, um, the possible moves method we, in the other rook class we, we have, why not reuse that? So that's what we did. But instead of passing in up, down, left, right as lambdas, so it can add up, down, right, left, we passed in up, right, up, left, which are other functions I wrote in that class, down, right, and down, left, so that all the diagonal squares instead will be added. So now, um, that the really great thing about that now is that in the queen class, a queen is essentially a combination between a rook and a bishop. So now in four lines of code, all I have to do is, um, I add, I combine the moves, the possible moves from the bishop and the rook that would have corresponded where the queen is right now and combine them into one huge list that has the diagonal moves from, we saw from the bishop and the straight up and down left right moves from the rook. And now you have all the queen moves. So this is awesome because, you know, we just reused all this code that, um, uh, we would have otherwise had to write. And now the, the thing is, um, in that, say we wanted to change that method, because as you saw, this method of possible moves, it does not record captures. So if we wanted to say implement a capture in this move, then basically you just change this method and then 
now all of a sudden the queen, bishop, and rook, they can all capture. So um, that is the power of abstraction because we abstracted a movement, the movement uh, without the direction because the direction can be passed in later, right? So why not take the, you know, why not just like move but then the, the direction, you know, you don't need to know what that is so because we can pass it in later. So my end result is I actually created a, a chess client called ChessPy and it's open source, you can get it on GitHub and it's written in 100% Python. And the cool thing is I also made it a framework as well as a script, like as well as an application. So the thing about, what I mean by framework is you can use it to, in your code, to play your own chess game. So say you wanted to, you know, make an art, like an artificial intelligence or whatever to play chess, right? And then this, uh, and then if you use this, you don't really have to program the specific built-in chess, you don't have to program it to know how to play, like, to, you don't have to program the machine that plays chess, you just have to program the player. So that's the power of this abstraction is, now that we have this game in a nice little package, later you could just basically import it, find out what the possible moves are, choose a move, and then move, and then later get the result of the game, you know, after the game's over. So um, you don't have to worry about, like, all this messiness that, um, you know, correct, you don't have to worry about all this messiness that comes from making a chess client because it's a framework. Um, so, yeah, this is my bibliography. Uh, and that's basically it. Thank you. So, are there any questions? So what I did with that, if you want me to explain it in more detail, is I created a rook object inside the class and I passed in the current queen location. So essentially it's creating a virtual rook that thinks it's where the queen is. And then I can take that and uh, um, all the possible moves that that virtual rook has, I can combine it with the possible moves that a virtual bishop has that also thinks it's in the queen's location. And I have all the possible moves of the queen in that location. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Have you used your code to implement a game or any kind of thing that builds on your code? Um, so for right now, uh, my code, it basically runs in a terminal. It doesn't, it, there's no UI. I can show you a demo if you want. Um, but basically, uh, like this, this is a default thing where it, it just runs in the, um, Terminal later, I might make a GUI for it. And as for something that implements it, later I'm thinking I might write like a, a machine learning algorithm or something that they can take this and you know learn how to play chess well. So, um, how much time do you have left? No, still have six minutes. Okay, so uh, do you guys want to see a demo? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So, um, this is my code, and yeah, let me just run this. So the cool thing is, uh, I figured out like that <laughs> there are these ASCII chess pieces that you can print on the console. <laughs> so that's a really nice representation. So um, if I want to move, say like the most popular first white move is e4, right? So I can take this, and then this will be converted into my move object and then it applies it on the board. But if I try something like for black, say I try an illegal move, say I try, um, I don't know, um, say I try e4 again, just to see what happens, then it's not gonna work because it doesn't match up with any of the possible moves. So obviously the black's reply would probably be e5, right? So then that gets moved. And I'm gonna just do the full move checkmate so you guys can see how this game will end. <laughs> um, so then white's move would be Queen to, let's see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So, um, Queen to H, two, three, four, right? Wait, no. Okay, fine. What, what move do you guys want to do next? I'm just curious. What? Queen H, 
Queen H5. Okay. Yeah, that's true. I'm bad at <laughs> there. Cool. And then um, say we do for black, we do a six just a time pass move. So then for white, we do bishop. What is it? Sorry? C4. C4. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of bad at algebraic notation. <laughs> so, sorry? What? Oh, yeah, okay. You're right. <laughs> um, well, I'll just do another B6. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then, I don't know, let's just do C6 next. Wait, no, that, yeah, that would work. C4, cool. Uh, and then, Queen F6, checkmate, right? F7, oh, what did I just do? Oh, good. Okay, so let's just do C, uh, A5. So, Queen, F7. Oh, yeah, Queen, X, F7. That's fine. Yeah, cool. So, the result is one. As you can see, um, this program's a lot better at playing chess than I am. But uh, so this result is one, meaning um, white one. So if it was black winning, it would be zero. If it was a tie, it would be zero point five. So the cool thing about this is now, if within code we can just set this to a value called result. So then when it returns this result, then we can use that result to further say fine tune what whoever's playing or whatever computer is playing this game. So, um, any other questions? What's the logic when you want to use, uh, when you say the available positions that these can have, when you want to do a cat, you need to use the logic of whether or not it's the same or a piece? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that a bit louder? Uh, I couldn't hear that. Yeah, when you want to say uh, available uh, pieces on the board for a particular piece, but you want to do a capture, you need a logic of knowing whether or not it's the opponent's piece that you're capturing. Oh, yeah. So um, how I implemented that was obviously with each piece is different. But um, basically, I have a, it, it each piece knows it has a value called input color. So using that, it knows if it's black or white. So I just have to check if the piece is of the opposite color. And if it is, then it can capture. If not, then it can't. Um, so any other questions? Yeah, that's true. The 50 move rule, I believe you're referring to, right? Yeah, so uh, for those of you guys who didn't know, the 50 move rules in chess is if both sides basically just dance around and there's no progress, no captures, no pawn moves. In 50 moves, the game's an automatic draw. So that's a good one. That's what I have to implement next. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. The, basically, the only way to end the game now is if there's zero moves left for anyone. So that's a stalemate or a, um, or a, um, you know, a checkmate. But yeah, that's that's a good one to do next. That would be fun. Okay. So, uh, any other questions? No. Um, okay. Looks like I'm done. <laughs>